The following program contains coarse language. Many religions claim to hold the key to man's salvation. Scientology is no exception. The most fundamental explanation um, as regards Scientology's basic beliefs is, is that man is basically good um, and that the individual is a spiritual being, that you've lived before and you'll live again, and um, that your capabilities are infinite if not yet fully realized. We have the ability to actually help make a difference in the situation in Haiti, and I just can't, you know, see not using this plane to help. But behind the church's high celebrity profile and pious exterior lies a leadership at war with its real and perceived enemies. They include a growing band of former Scientologists and any media like Four Corners that dares to report their grievances. That was a private investigator who's been following us all night long. In recent months, a storm has erupted around Scientology. In Australia and overseas, the church stands accused of breaking the law and destroying families. Its critics are growing in strength and numbers, openly challenging the church over how it treats its adherents and punishes them. It's a slave camp, there's no question about it, because people are definitely abused. People were thrown overboard, hands bound and feet bound and blindfolded. You know, women are 55 years old. I was angry. Don't get me wrong, if I could have gone up there and, and King hit the very individual that signed my daughter to scrubbing out a dumpster, I would have been there. Tonight on Four Corners, former members of the church who say they've suffered enough shine a light on the dark side of Scientology. In 1968, a British camera crew caught up with an eccentric middle-aged captain on his boat, the Royal Scotman. <laughs> the American was L. Ron Hubbard, and he'd made a name for himself as the founder of Scientology. The subject of name means skill, which means knowing how to know in the fullest sense of the word, ology, which is study of. So it is actually study of knowingness. That is what the word itself means. When this interview was filmed, Hubbard was in trouble with authorities around the world. In the United States, the tax authorities were after him, and his followers stood accused of practicing mind control techniques. Do you ever think that you might be quite mad? Oh, yes. The one man in the world who never believes he's mad is a madman. These are no ordinary seamen. Their allegiance and devotion to the mysterious man is total. To them, he is my Commodore. Hubbard was on the run, moving from port to port, and had surrounded himself with a corps of young and loyal Scientologists. He called them the Sea Organization, or Sea Org. I was one of about 10 or 15 people who was invited, being the highest trained. Hannah Eltringham Whitfield was an early member of Sea Org, and Hubbard rewarded her loyalty by appointing her captain of two ships. She remembers him as a complex, contradictory figure. He appeared a quite distinguished, normal-looking, middle-aged person. Did you and your fellow adherents in the church see him as some kind of saviour? Very definitely, yes. But there was a dark side to L. Ron Hubbard. 
Behind the jovial smile lay a taste for extreme forms of discipline. How were people treated on those ships if they misbehaved or if they transgressed? Abominably. I mean, looking back, um, I, you know, I deeply regret my, even my fringe participation in some of the things that went on. And I'm ashamed of some of them. People were thrown overboard, hands bound and feet bound and blindfolded. You know, women of 55 years old, you know, for, for, uh, for, for running a process incorrectly, a counseling technique incorrectly in, a, in an auditing session, you know. These people would be rescued but Hubbard exercised absolute authority over his crews, and those who crossed him risked being consigned to a punishment group he called the RPF, the Rehabilitation Project Force. They were dressed in rags, they were filthy, they weren't even allowed to bathe except maybe once a week, and their food would be served to them in slop buckets, and they would eat out of those slop buckets on the deck with their hands. Oh, and, you know, looking back at something like that, there's no way, there's no way anyone can justify not saying something, not doing something, yet not one of us spoke out, not one of us did anything. Hubbard's culture of unwavering obedience and extreme discipline survived his own passing in 1986 and continues to the present day under the leadership of his successor, David Miscavige. In Australia, the movement Hubbard founded has had a stormy passage. After being banned in three states in the 1960s, Scientology achieved the legal status of a religion in 1983, allowing it to be tax exempt. Now, there are calls for its status to be reviewed. It definitely needs to be an inquiry into the church's status, because it's not really a church. It may have a philosophy that's religious, but it's strictly business. Joe Reish is a former rugby league star who played for Eastern Suburbs and Canterbury Bankstown back in the 1970s. He was recruited to Scientology in Sydney at the age of 19. Later, he moved to America, and tonight he's speaking out for the first time. Initially, I wasn't attracted to it, but I was curious about knowing how someone could be better. And I've always, I'm always about improvement. And, and if that was a way to improve me to be a better athlete or a better football player or a better person, I was interested. As a well-known football player, Joe Reish was treated like a star by the church. And he wasn't just successful on the field. He was a fast learner of L. Ron Hubbard's teaching. I did the highest level by the age of 23. The painful experiences hidden in your reactive mind are the cause of your fears. When members of the public are recruited into Scientology, they learn about Dianetics, L. Ron Hubbard's self-styled science of mental health. What would life be like if all of the pain you've experienced no longer affected your abilities, emotions, and behavior? You would be yourself free to enjoy life and reach your full potential. In short, your mind would be clear. That is the goal of Dianetics. But learning Dianetics costs money. Joe Reish calls it the bait and switch. But the I'm telling you is that if you want to